Hello there. In this video, I'll teach you how to compute trainer ratio in Excel. Let's suppose you would like to estimate the trainer ratio for a particular stock or fund. So in this video tutorial, I've chosen Amazon stock as our example. Okay. The first step you need to do is to download the data you need. And to compute a trainer ratio, you need three pieces of data. So you need the returns on your stock, so these are monthly returns of Amazon shares. And I'm using monthly data for five years. So 60 return observations in total. And you need monthly returns on a market benchmark. I'm going to use S&P 500 returns in this example. And also you need monthly returns on a proxy of the risk-free rate. And that's going to be our monthly treasury bill returns. All of this data can be easily downloaded from Yahoo Finance. We've got a separate video on that if you're interested. And by the way, this is exactly the same data set we used uh, when we were learning how to compute Jensen's Alpha in Excel. So if you're interested, you can check that out too. Okay, let's get started. So the very first thing you would like to do is to compute what's called excess returns. So I'm just going to copy this over here. And I'm going to call this excess returns. So in fact, we can also copy paste these labels as well. So excess return is simply the difference between the raw return and the risk-free rate of return. Okay, And I'm going to use this. Uh, fix this column as well, because I'm going to expand it um, both to the right and to the bottom. So basically, this is the excess return for October on Amazon shares. This is the excess return uh, on the market. Okay, so you can think of it as excess market returns. And if you would like, this is not essential, but you can also compute excess returns on treasury bill as well. Of course, that's going to be zero. So I'm going to expand this all the way down. So we've got monthly excess returns as well. OK, now I need to compute two things. I'm going to compute average excess return, okay, average excess return. I will also compute average raw return, but this is not essential. I'm going to need this for producing a graph later on to illustrate the trainer ratio. You don't need to do this. Um, you can skip it if you want to, but this is definitely what you need. Okay, So you need the average excess return for Amazon. Of course, you're going to select all of this here. Okay. So this was 1.12% per month. Okay. So you can multiply it by 12 to get an annual figure, if you like. So over this five-year period, on an annual basis, Amazon shares yielded an excess return of 13.4%. For S&P 500, it was 9.06%. And of course, for Treasury bill, it has to be zero. Okay. Let's quickly compute the average returns as well. Again, this is not essential. I just needed to produce a nice graph at the end, so just bear with me. So this again, I'm going to multiply by 12. So of course, average raw return will be higher than the excess return because we are subtracting the risk-free rate over here. And the same is true for S&P 500. And of course, the treasury bill return will be positive as well. So this is the average risk-free rate over this period. Okay, now this is important, like I said, for computing the trainer ratio. The other input you need is the beta of the stock. Okay, so let's compute the beta for Amazon shares. You could do this in two different ways. We also have a separate detailed video on that as well. You can either run a regression, okay, so you can regress excess returns on Amazon on the excess returns on S&P 500, or you could uh, take a shortcut and use what's called the slope function. So this would just give you the slope of the regression line 
directly. Okay, so it's a bit faster. So let's um, do that. So I'm going to regress. Amazon excess Amazon returns on excess market returns. In fact, I can actually fix this. And the beat of Amazon over this period was 1.17, essentially. So let's just format this a bit more nicely, 1.17. Not surprisingly, the beat of our market will be 1, exactly, by definition. And the beat of our treasury bill will be 0. Okay. Again, these are not important, but I'm going to use that for uh, my graph later. Finally, the trainer ratio. So this is what we needed. Trainer ratio is simply the average excess return divided by beta. And that's it. Okay, so I'm going to just put this in the numerator and beta on the denominator. And there we are. Let's format that a bit more nicely as well as a percentage figure. So the trainer ratio for Amazon on an annual basis over this period was 11.45%. So this is a reward to risk ratio, similar to sharp ratio. Our risk measure is beta, systematic risk. Okay, so it tells me that per unit beta, this stock generated eleven point forty five percent return, and we can compare that with uh, the S and P, a trainer ratio of S and P five hundred, and this is going to be. Uh, 9.06 percent so the trainer ratio for amazon is slightly higher this may not make too much sense without visualizing it so i would like to actually draw a, a nice plot now to to explain you what this really means okay and i can't really compute the trainer ratio uh for treasury bill because that's going to be undefined because the beta is zero right because the denominator is zero this won't work this undefined so i can actually delete that so this is fine and the last thing i would like to do is to insert a nice graph so let's use maybe a scatter plot it's already picking some data for me but i don't want to use that data i'm going to um, select my own data so let's remove all of these. Now let's add a series. So I would like to select for X values, you need the betas. Okay. So the beta of Amazon. And I'm going to add uh, the treasury bill on this graph as well. And then this is fine. And for Y values, I would like the average returns, average raw returns, my stock and of the treasury. There we go. So these are the two observations I needed on it. So this is one series. Let's work on this at the moment. So this is Amazon up here. Okay, so I can actually add a data label here. So I would like to add a trend line, okay, a chart element, trend line. And we can actually format this a little, a little nicer as well. Let's forecast for alpha period. So this will extend the line a little further. So why did I do this? The reason I did this is that here on the x-axis, I've got beta. And on the y-axis, I've got average return. So the trainer ratio is simply the slope of this line. Okay, so that's the uh, geometrical interpretation of that. So let me add another um, element here. So let me add the market return. Okay, so for x, I'm going to add uh, the beta of the market. All right, 
and for y, average row return. There you go. So this is my market return. It. Now I can understand better why the trainer ratio for Amazon is bigger than the trainer ratio for S&P 500. Because uh, for uh, the market, the trainer ratio is the slope of the line that connects this point to the risk-free rate. And the slope of that line is flatter, so it's smaller. Whereas this line is a steeper slope. And that's the reason why the trainer ratio is higher for Amazon shares. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.